We Don't Need Permission. How Black Business Can Change Our World by Eric Collins. This is a good book. I read it because I, well, because I wanted to, no. <laughs> because I was interviewing Eric for the Society of Authors a while ago um, for a virtual tea. We had a really nice fireside chat. Um, so I had a chance to read it, but I, I, I wanted to share the book and share some of the key takeaways um, from the book and perhaps, yeah, I'm gonna, not perhaps, I'm going to read an extract. Um, a little bit from the blurb at the back, so I'm gonna quickly summarize. Whether you live in a developed or developing world, if you are a black person, you are more than twice as likely to be living in poverty than your white counterparts today. We Don't Need Permission argues that investing in black and underrepresented entrepreneurs in order to create successful businesses is the surest, fastest, socio-economic game changer it is. Really interesting. I think some of the points within the book are up for debate from a political perspective um, and will serve as a good conversation starter from a political perspective. Um, you know, some might argue how you know in terms of a deeply entrenched way that capitalism is designed and how it, it, it kind of controls our lives um how much work is required to dismantle and overcome a lot of the barriers that are put in place for black entrepreneurs um is 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 it really the answer um I think it I think this book offers some solutions. I think, um, as I said, it's what I particularly liked about the book is, you know, he, Eric shares his own experience as eventually, you know, he's a, he's obviously he's, gonna, he's, he's speaking about money. He's, he's got experience within that space of investing and, you know, uh, venture capitalism and uh, being a venture capitalist and all of those things, VC funding, um he has done a lot of work um you know working with underrepresented communities business owners and entrepreneurs um and being an entrepreneur myself you know some you know much of what he speaks about in this book was relevant and um was important you know there's how many chapters in this book there's about 10 chapters it's not difficult to read um just over 230 pages pretty pretty straightforward I found and I think it was useful I think it's a really useful conversation start and I keep you know reiterating this because there's there are going to be sec 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 sections of this book where you know I hope you stop and you ask yourselves questions as it pertains to you know socio-economic factors, class, um, politics, um, economics. There's a lot of things I think it's really important that we, we look at. Um, I particularly, I like the fact that Eric included a chapter on black women because we're often erased. Um, he's got a chapter called Black Women are an Excellent Investment. Um, yes, we are, but we're still underfunded. I'm going to really, I'm going to try and read a little bit from that chapter now. Um, underrepresented women founders understand the potential of a virtuous circle. So do black women, Latinx women, Asian women, immigrant women, Native American women in the US, Indigenous women the world over, refugee women, LGBTQ plus women, as well as women with disabilities, women from religious, cultural minorities, and women who experience bias because of their age. We know that women in the workplace are the most overworked and undervalued, yet they are also most often the ones mainly raising children, doing the household work, frequently managing finances, also making time to volunteer as church mothers, school helpers, community community activists, unpaid social connectors for friends and families. My goodness. They are the mother lionesses protecting their pride, seeking out any opportunities to create generational wealth so their daughters and sons can have it a little easier. They are all inspiring and possess formidable superpowers. When called on to confront increasingly violent and tactically permitted 
racism, women of colour have every right to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. They are not. In fact, there's an African proverb that says, when sleeping women wake, mountains move. My absolute conviction is that when we invest in underrepresented women, mountains will move. Which mountains? Well, which mountains, right? Yeah, part of me, as I read that, was feeling a little bit, how can I feel? Yeah, I think the list made me feel tired. I don't want to be, you know, categorised as superhuman, but unfortunately that's the way the world categorises us, right? Especially as a black woman. And I've written a piece about not wanting to be a superhero and not wanting to, to, to be seen as strong or when I say a superhero, somebody, you know, somebody who's saving everyone else but myself. Um, but what Eric does is he includes clear data and con concise information and it's fact based. Um, it's important. Um, we don't need permission. Do we have access? Not always. But I absolutely agree that we don't need permission. Can we imagine a new world, way of thinking and living? Yes. Should we, be, should we be imagining a new way of living? Yes. Can black businesses change the world? I hope so. <laughs> um, I hope so. Yes, we can. But there's still a long way to go. Um, and there's still so many other factors to think about. So... Yeah, this was good. This was really, it's worth reading. Very easy to read. Great discussion. Great conversation to have. Powerful. Meaningful. Definitely uh, recommend you give it a read. Dissect it. Talk about it. Um, yeah. Do what you will with it. <laughs> give it a try.